good evening all welcome to the new session that is science in radiology set 5 coming to the first case this is a lateral wrist radiograph so whenever you see lateral wrist radiograph whenever you suspect triquetral fracture what are the signs we have to suspect in triquetral fracture here you can see this is fracture noted in the triquetrum with the displacement of the fracture fragments dorsally so these fracture fragments which are displaced dorsally mimics the poop of the duck so whenever you see fractures whenever you suspect fracture of the triquetrum with displacement of the fracture fragments dorsally suspect uh, pooping duck sign in this pooping duck sign the scaphoid uh, the proximal scaphoid forms the head and neck of the duck whereas the lunate forms the body of the duck whereas the dorsal cortex of the triquetrum forms the tail of the duck and these fracture fragments displaced posteriorly or dorsally forms the poop of the duck so this is typical pooping duck sign so here you can see i have annotated it so this is the typical pooping duck sign and this, uh, this poop is nothing but the displaced fracture fragments which are displaced dorsally from the triquetrum so remember to pooping duck sign in uh, triquetral fractures on lateral wrist radiograph next case uh, you can see in this case you can see there is a small concave shaped hemorrhage uh, which is noted in the uh, juxtacortical white matter which are less than 20 mm and this typically mimics the cashew nut so whenever you see small less than 20 mm concave shaped intercerebral hemorrhages in the juxtacortical white matter which mimics the cashew nut uh, suspect cerebral venous and thrombosis so these cashew nut shape is typically due to involvement of arcuate segments of the subcortical veins which run parallel to the subcortical u fibers and whenever you see these cashew nut shape hemorrhages which is more specific that is 98 percent for intracerebral hemorrhage due to cerebral venous thrombosis in this case you can see this is a hyperdense suprasagittal sinus with thrombosis and there are even uh, hemorrhages in the right parietal lobe with minimal sih so remember cashew nut sign in uh, cerebral hemorrhages in the juxtacortical white matter due to cerebral venous and thrombosis next case here you can see this is also intracerebral hemorrhage and we will try to know about black hole sign so here you can see there is a hypodense or dark area which makes the black hole inside the white hyperdense uh, peripheral hyperdense hematoma so whenever you see a small black hole within the hyperdense hematoma definitely suspect uh, unclotted or acute extravasation of the blood and which is a predictor for hematoma expansion so this is the initial scan where we have seen the black hole and the hematoma in the subsequent scans and the follow-up definitely you can see there is expansion of the hematoma in the, in the temporoparietal lobes and even uh, expansion of the edema so this black hole is nothing but uh, due to acute extravasation of the blood inside the clotted blood uh, which nothing but predicts the hematoma expansion and here you can see this black hole is nothing also described as a encapsulated swirl sign and he clearly and one point you have to remember is there should be at least 28 hu difference between the un, uh, acute extravasated blood or unclotted blood and the clotted blood to, to uh, predict it as black hole sign so remember black hole sign next case we'll try to see swirl sign uh, here you can see in this hemorrhage there are high uh, hypodense areas alternative hypodense areas which are nothing but acute extravasation of the blood this was a case of intracerebral hemorrhage here this was a case of edh uh, you can see also there are hypodense and hyperdense area in alternative fashion this hypodense area is nothing but unclotted blood and the hyperdense area is the clotted blood this is other case of hdh also where you can see alternative hypodense and hyperdense bands which mimics the swirl so this swirl sign and black hole sign are typical predictors for hepatoma expansion so swirl sign can be seen in intracerebral hemorrhage even in edh and even in sdh as we have seen in this series of cases thanks to dr hisham for contributing this edh case so this is that swirl sign so where the hypodense and hyperdense area mimic the swirls or waves huh? and here you can see also see there is a small black hole inside the peripheral hyperdense uh, hematoma so this is that black hole sign next case what is blend sign we will try to see what is blend sign blend sign is nothing but there will be sorry blend sign is nothing but there will be two areas nothing but uh, there will be two uh, one one area is very hypodense another one is very hyperdense area this hypodense area is nothing but active extravasation of the blood or unclotted blood and this hyperdense area is the clotted blood so the blend sign is also one of the predictor for hematoma expansion for uh, for uh, depicting for uh, defining the blend sign the four criteria which should be sent are blending of a relative hypodense area with adjacent hypodense area a well defined margin identified by the naked eye here you can see clearly see there is a margin between the hypodense area and the hypodense area and at least there should be 18 hu difference between the 
two areas so whenever you take hu from this area and this area there should be 18 hu difference between both these areas and a relatively hypodense area not being encapsulated by the hyperdense region so this is typical blend sign so blend sign is also one of the predictor for hematoma expansion next we'll try to see so swirl sign black hole sign and blend sign three in a row so this is that black hole sign this is that uh, swirl sign where you can find uh, see hypodense and hyperdense areas in alternative la layers and also here you can see that blend sign that where two different densities blend with each other so this swirl sign black hole sign and blend sign are three indicators for hematoma expansion so whenever you see these type of signs definitely follow up the scan follow up take a follow up scan uh, and see for hematoma expansion next case what is bright band sign here you can see this is a case of a splenic infarction and this was ca case was taken from radiopedia thanks to dr anas binomar for contributing this case here you can see these in in bright band sign these are nothing but these bright bands are nothing but the preserved fibrous trabeculae whereas these hypodense areas are nothing but necrosis and hemorrhage so this was a case of splenic infarction these bright bands are nothing but preserved fibrous trabeculae uh, and these hypodense areas are hypo hypoechoic areas are nothing but necrotic areas so this uh, uh, whenever you see this bright band sign definitely suspect splenic infarction and which can be seen in multiple th thromboembolic uh, cases or hypoglycobulic states or pancreatic diseases or hematological malignancies so remember bright band sign in splenic infarction next case uh, this was a case of here you can see this was a case of lymphoma where, where you can see these are the conglomerate lymph nodal masses which is causing elevation of the iota from the vertebral column so whenever you see conglomerate masses in the retroperitoneal region or any other mass in the retroperitoneal region causing elevation of the iota from the vertebral margin definitely suspect floating iota sign so what is this floating iota sign this floating iota sign is displacement of the abdominal iota away from the vertebral column on lateral lumbar radiographs in the normal expected location of the post aortic wall is less than 10 mm in men and less than 7.3 mm in women similarly the anteriority wall is within 40 mm in men and 37.3 in women so any retroperitoneal mass so here any retroperitoneal mass which causes elevation of the iota away from the vertebral column suspect floating iota sign the floating iota sign is very classically depicted on the lateral uh, image in the ct thanks to dr sheshang chapala for contributing this case next case what is the pseudo testis appearance or pattern so this was a case where you can see the uh, uh, young boy presented with the swelling in the sternocleidomastoid muscle and typically you can th see there is a lesion hypoechoic lesion uh, which typically has the uh, which typically has a low homogeneous uh, homogeneous low to medium echos which mimic, mimics the testicle so this imaging echo appearance is nothing but similar to a testicle so this is nothing but called the pseudo testis appearance and i will try to play the video of this case here you can see Typically, you can see this is a testicular like structure noted in the sternocleidomastoid muscle and even some central hypoechoic area, echogenic area, which is also having a target pattern. So, this is seen in the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So, this, this appearance, whenever you see this pseudo testis appearance or pattern, definitely suspect epidermal cyst. So, which is uh, this pseudo testis appearance or pattern is very classical for epidermal cyst. And other findings which can be sonographic findings, which can also seen can be dermal attachment, focal dermal protrusion, and distinctive concentric ring or target pattern. So remember pseudo testis appearance or pattern in uh, epidermal inclusions is next uh, here you can see this was a case of a chordoma with uh, this is the chordoma rising from the vertebra and with a significant soft tissue component so here also this is other case where you can see this is a chordoma in the uh, coccyx which is typically having a intense homogeneous enhancement with significant soft tissue component extending into the presacral space so this mimics the mushroom so this whenever you see chordoma and if you see this mushroom type of appearance definitely suspect chordoma so this chordoma with soft tissue component mimics mushroom appearance but most common differential can be hemangioma so dynamic time resolved imaging of contrast kinetics that is mr imaging shows arterial phase early enhancement and prominent arterial supply supplying the lesion in vertebral hemangioma so whenever you see this mushroom type of appearance which can be seen either chordoma or hemangioma where dynamic tix imaging helps in differentiating hemangioma from chordoma because in hemangioma you have early arterial phase intense enhancement and prominent artery supplying the lesion in hemangioma which is not seen in chordoma thank you all